we're going to be doing a new series called Back to the Beach and over the next five videos or so we're going to be looking at five things that you can find pretty much anywhere in the world on a beach and sometimes even in land. Number one of five things you can collect at the beach are shells. And on Sunday Nicole's going to make a Victorian inspired shell box. Yes, if you're looking for shell fragments, there's no better place to look uh, than in the scree here. This is a really nice one actually. In fact, it's not. That's a stone. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a shell fragment. If it was, it would have been perfect. But look at that one. That's really lovely. It's got a really nice yellow mark there. I don't know if that's rust, but I like it. Mm, that's very nice. And here we found half of what we're looking for. I think Nicole's done better than me. You can see... This is half a wee birdie there. We can't use that. Let's see what Nicole's found. Well, you've done far better than me. I can see at least two, maybe three of those little birds there. Yeah, and this little one is perfect. So I think that's one earring. Now we just need to find the matching one. And I've also found lots of really smooth bits of uh, shells. They're really nice. That's very cool. Well, let's see, normally when we're down here, we find some really nice colorful shells. So let's see if we can find some colorful shells for that Victorian inspired shell box. That'd be great, yeah. Okay, so this is not what we're looking for, but it is, again, a shell where you can see that little bird shape in there. I hope you can see that. See the wee wing, wee tail, pointing off to the head. But sadly, for us at least, there's too much of the shell material around that we can't use. So we'll leave that. One day, maybe that'll be a wee birdie too. Oh, that's nice. A bit bigger than the other one. It's not a shell, but it's better than that. Let's have a look. Okay, let's see if you can see this. I shall pan by, mm -hmm. see if you spot it. Can you see it yet? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll it's show because you it's it. a bit of a glare. Okay, it's there. Okay, let's zoom in and where Nicole's uh -huh. finger is. Can you see what it is now? Ooh. Do you believe you can? That's lovely. Yay! Awesome. Now, do we know, is that a glass bead? Can we tell? Oh, it looks like a glass bead. It's frosted. Plastic beads don't really frost, so... Okay, let's take a closer look then. Yeah. That's very nice. You can see all the way through it. You can see it's picked up some grains of sand in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. I'm moving my hand up and down because I want to just look at it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I love a bead. That's a really nice one as well. Nice yeah. little long bead there. Yeah, really nice shape. And what colour would you say that's kind of almost violet? Yeah, well, it's kind of sky blue or like ocean blue. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Yeah. That's a nice one. Looks glass to me. Yeah, certainly taking that. Now, we're not having an awful lot of luck finding whole shells up here. Uh, I think the scree, the scree's just smashing all the shells up. So we're getting little fragments like this. But it's making the edges of these fragments really nice and soft. And it's wearing them down so that they're a really beautiful colour as well. So we'll collect these, or we'll at least collect some of them, and we'll see if there's something that we can maybe do with them. That might be nice in a piece of jewellery. I'm not sure. We'll see when we get home what we might be able to do with these. All just fragments. So we're not having an awful lot of luck finding shells here, at least not whole shells. We find lots of tiny little pieces. That's mainly because we're in an area where there's lots of stones like this and the shells are just getting smashed up in the scree. But we are finding some really nice wee shells, so we'll keep looking here for a wee while and then we'll get up there where we think the rocks might be looking after the shells a little bit better on this beach. Not 
Not sure if it's usable, a wee bit much there. But we'll take that along. And this. Oh, you found a wee piece of blue glass. Yep. Okay. It's like a little earring. <laughs> Well, I think we've about exhausted our time in this part of the beach. Yeah. So, shall we make it along the beach a bit then? Yeah, which way do you want to go? That way or that way? I think that way. <laughs> Are you having any more luck up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found a few more birds and I found a really nice rounded shell and something, um, I can't really describe it, but it looks really nice. It's like it's eaten by worms, but it's got a really lovely texture. Okay, well, I'm finding these, yeah, we're finding some whole shells. They're not very oh. pretty ones, but nonetheless, they're whole shells. We might be able to use them. All oh, right, yeah, they're really much bigger than the ones I've collected. Oh cool, well yeah, big and small, we need them all. <laughs> so these are the really lovely pieces that I found. A few more birds, a couple of pieces of tiny sea glass, and this rounded shell, and this is probably my favourite one. We've got a lot more to find yet. Yeah, let's go. That's very cool. Hey. I found a bunch of shells. Uh, some of them, some of them, I think broken and stuff. Okay. We'll have a look at them all together. There we yeah. go. And there's a few pieces of glass in there as well. All right. I know we're not out looking for glass, but you know, yeah. it'd be a shame to leave it, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll show you my piece next to the white piece. Well, this is really lovely. The sun's coming out. It's lighting up our finds and making them look all pretty. Yeah, doesn't it look so beachy in my hand? Beachy? Yeah, it's like mm. a beach in my hand. Ah, a little palm beach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you can see that's the sun purple. Yeah. And that's white right next to it. So this one would have started off as white a long time ago and the sun made it purple. If you're not sure why that's happening, check out our video on manganese sea glass. Yeah, and that, that video is about Mary Somerville as well, who was an avid seashell collector. Oh yeah, that's true. And the person for whom the word scientist was created. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of think we might have more luck here where there are some bigger rocks. And those bigger rocks will protect the shells from getting smashed about amongst the smaller ones. At least that's the theory. Let's see if I'm right. I found a wee shell haven in here, so let's see if we can collect some of these nice wee shells. Some really lovely shells there. Yeah, yeah, some really nicely shaped ones as well, so and uh, really nice white ones. I think they'll look lovely on the box. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Humans have been fascinated by shell collection for at least a hundred thousand years. Some beautifully elaborated and decorated shells have been found to be some of the earliest expressions of human civilization. Seashells are incredible things. Their beauty and complexity have inspired artists, architects, scientists and mathematicians alike. We're fond of reminding ourselves that these unassuming wee things inspired Mary Somerville, the woman for whom the word scientist was invented. Mary's interest in shells started her on a journey of discovery that led her to study and try to understand the workings of the universe. Over the millennia, shells have lent themselves to many uses. 
So many, in fact, that we're unlikely to do more than scratch the surface here. Perhaps most obvious, very many shells hold a source of food. In fact, vast numbers of oyster shells have been found in prehistoric middens all along the shores of the River Forth. Once the oyster had been eaten, their shells could be shaped and fashioned into scrapers, peelers, blades, fishing hooks and buttons, among many other things. Some seashells can be used to hold liquid, making them useful as cups, bowls and plates. They can also be used to bail out canoes. And, if filled with coconut oil and a bark wick, they can even be used as lamps. Shells of all shapes and sizes have been and continue to be used ornamentally in very many parts of the world. In other parts of the world, shells have long been used, a bit like money, as a medium of exchange, and sometimes across vast distances. The list is endless. Shells really are incredibly interesting and adaptable things. Many exotic shells found their way to Europe during the years of exploration. And shells carved by sailors can be found in museums around the world today. Museum collections like these are not without controversy, and we'll maybe leave that discussion for another time. Sometimes, sailors used small seashells to decorate trinkets or boxes to gift to loved ones upon their return home. These exotic seashells were also of interest to scientists, and even Darwin's theories were informed by seashells. But seashells also offered Europeans a glimpse of the other side of the world, and they tempted the wealthy to exchange vast sums of money for a little part of these far-off places. Collectors began to pay extraordinary sums of money for what they perceived to be scarce specimens. At its height, some seashells were demanding extraordinary prices. During an auction of 1757, some shells were selling for as much as oil paintings by well-established and respected artists. Shell madness was short-lived. As travel increased, so more shells found their way into Europe and the super rare eventually became quite ordinary. Some shells managed to maintain their value. Until 1966, Gloria Maris, among the rarest of shells, was a jewel in the crown of shell collections. And as recently as 1957, when only a few of these shells were known to exist, one sold for $2,000, which is around $18,000 in today's money. Although none of the shells that we find and collect here in Scotland is likely to make anyone particularly wealthy, they are nonetheless beautiful. Shell work, the practice of using seashells to decorate objects, was once highly fashionable in the Victorian period. This is when Alexander Batchelor decorated his house and his coffin in shells they had collected by crawling along the Fife coast on his hands and knees. More practical items from this time, such as shell work boxes, are still very collectible today. We reckon that Levin's Bucky House or Shell House, created by William Bissett, which opened its doors to the public in 1927, was among the last grand expression of consulate mania. Although only little remains of this once awe-inspiring place, it is a reminder of how amazing and beautiful seashells are. And it's an inspiration for the shell work box that Nicole will make in our Sunday video, so be sure to check that out. We often overlook these amazing wee things, but we wanted to make a special place for them in this series, where we get back to the beach, and back to our roots in mudlarking and beachcombing. Things you can collect, number one, seashells. <laughs> It's interesting, there's these little seams of shells like this. So there's little lines of uh, shells reaching up from the, uh, from the sea there. There's also large patches of shells as well, closer to the sea. 
So what are you finding in there? Oh, you got some really nice ones. Yeah, I've got some really nice, uh, well, I've got some really nice ones. Yeah, there's some really nice shells and those tiny, tiny limpet shells. I think they're going to look great on the shell box. Yeah, I think they're really pretty shells. Yeah. When I collect shells, I'm always reminded of the uh, man who crawled up all along the Fife coast to make the shell house and answer that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've hit the jackpot here. There are so many wee shells here. They're mainly all sun bleached still. Uh, so we'll see if we can get some of these really lovely little bright yellow and pink shells as well. But in the meantime, I think we'll collect a bunch of these. They're really nice. Lots of sand as well, I'm <laughs> seeing. Yeah. That's grand. Mm -hmm. I think we're up to a good start here. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing the difference from different parts of the beach. Just a short distance from where I am just now, all we were finding were shell fragments. Yet here, we're finding lots and lots of shells. And they're all in pretty good condition. Some of them are covered in algae, but that's not a problem for us. We can clean them up. So I wonder how Nicole's doing up this end of the beach. I've got a handful of the shells that I just collected up here. So many limpet shells and such big ones. Yeah, there's a whole horde of them behind us. All right. Do you want to go back and collect some? Yeah, yeah they also make really nice wind chimes. Oh, cool. Because they kind of make that noise. Yeah, good That's noise. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to see my pink rock? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now the sun really sets off those limpet shells. Yeah, yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? And my pink rock. Yeah, let's have a look at the pink rock. I just found a whole cache of these, the little black shells. They're very cool. And the ubiquitous piece of bottle there. So what do you think of these little shells? I've just curated a little pile of them here. Mm. And they're all black. Now right next to your foot there, there's a whole heap of them. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Quite a few here. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of them. Just seen this really nice wee red one. I'll put that up, it's not going to sit on the top. Well, there's loads of these here. Yeah. Always checking that there's nobody in it. Always collect empty shells. Um, they're really nice, I think, the black ones. Yeah, we can make a wee gothic uh, treasure chest for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think rather than mixing them up. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think they'd be really nice. Tiny ones here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, let's take those as well. Okay, let's gather them up then. If you sit here, you can really take your time and mm. you look around, you find the tiniest, tiniest shells. They're so cute. Check these out, they're really tiny. It's becoming a bit of a habit for us now to find these. This wee thing here, see it? The wee crab claw. I think this one might even be a uh, smaller than the one that Nicole recently found. I really like them. I think they're great wee things. So we'll certainly take that along. Check this out. I think I found a tiny skull. So I'm just about to look at this tiny skull Nicole pointed out and then I noticed that tucked in behind this stone 
there are some beautifully coloured uh, little shells. And, oh, sadly it's only a half bird. But check that out, that's really cool. It has a little red stripe around, it's a black shell. And this one over here has a really nice kind of salmon pink colour. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that stripy one. Yeah, let's grab those. Tiny, tiny. So, the reason we looked down here in the first place is this wee thing here. Mm. Now, yeah, it's certainly bone. Yeah. It's got teeth. Oh. Ah, it's rodents. It's definitely a rodent. You see these little teeth at the front? Yeah, yeah. So we can see that's definitely a rodent of some oh, kind. Oh, so it might have been like a rat or something? It could have been a rat, yeah. Mm. Tiny teeth. Are there beach rats? Mm, I'm not sure, I'll put you my know, finger next to it. Yeah, yeah, so there's for scale. I'll pick it up. Oops, it's very fragile as well. Not really something that we collect. So I think we've found a bunch of shells around here. What do you think? We're getting on okay, but are we really getting the variety that we want to make that box? Well, we found mainly limpet shells and lots of other white shells, which is fantastic. I think we have a couple of these really nice tiny, tiny pink shells in the house that we've collected a few months ago. So we'll use those and we'll mix them all up so we get a more of a variety. Well, that's us for today. We're going to head back off to the car and get along home. Don't forget to join us on Sunday when Nicole will be making a Victorian-inspired shell-covered box using the shells that we've found here today. Thank you so much for watching, liking and commenting on the videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. A huge thanks to you for helping support this channel through Etsy, Amazon and Kofi. It really means the world to us. Thank you so much.